and there is only very few that uh, is left. But sanctions generally are still endless. The U.S., for example, has not yet sanctioned Iranian, you know, airspace, Iranian uh, water space. It could, it could do lots of stuff with the travel, air travel to Iran, you know, to shipping in, you know, regarding Iran and, and so on. So again, I believe Mr. O'Brien meant to say that they have been very tough. Mm. on Iran. That's all that he really wanted to say. Okay. And Kamran, what's the context then of Russia, right? Because we know that, of course, uh, there's been a lot of pressure in that relationship as well, right, between the U.S. and Russia, and even the EU and Russia. There have been sanctions even by the EU on Russia also, be it about Ukraine or otherwise. Um, has the U.S. sort of out-sanctioned itself when it comes to Russia as well? I think directly the sanctions of the United States uh, states uh, didn't damage the Russian economy. Uh, the main effect uh, is the sanctions of the European Union and the EU, as we see, they are obliged uh, to confirm and to uh, listen the opinion of the United States and even if the uh, EU didn't sanction, uh, for example, the Nord Stream uh, 2, they uh, still uh, don't like to uh, finalize this project. As for Russia, of course, Russia, uh, uh, for Russia, they were very harmful in terms of finances, uh, stability of uh, rubble and prices. And they also led to the closure of the Western technology for our market. But on the other hand, uh, I can say that restrictions, uh, at the same time, they stimulate Russian production especially in agriculture and now as you know russia has become the largest uh, exporter of wheat in the world and provides uh, not uh, itself with agriculture products but also saudi arabia algeria and uh, other markets 